Alright guys, such to back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day. So far, I'm with Major 3 in Toronto, just around the corner. Shotzi has made his explanation as to why he thinks Optic might have had so much success in spoilers to join the team, at least one potential explanation. But also, the Paris agent might well be on the move. Not just the city, the franchise city might well be moving, but could the ownership group as well actually be moving on from the CDL? Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really up to the channel. Plenty, of course, to dive into today. First of all, the players that moving out there. Two Toronto are not moving, of course, just for the diving for this upcoming weekend. Scum McCoy flying from Dallas to Toronto, all that type of stuff. Cool stuff, and it's good to see all the guys out there. Of course, like they'll have uh, maybe a day or so of practice at the venue, get ready to go before the matches begin tomorrow on Thursday. So, well, everyone's out in business at the moment. Unfortunately, one person who won't be flying out there is Chris Tun. Unfortunately, Tun and Bryce won't be a casting duo this time. Tun test is a positive. Tough scenes, honestly. I really enjoyed this duo. I think they're fantastic in a venue as well. So, that means, I mean, look, the positive is, the least we have Maven and Merck at these events right so like we don't necessarily need the forecasting joes although it is nice so like um i mean yeah at least i think maybe the mark are going to be there i haven't really seen tweets when they're flying out but i'm guessing they're going to be there because pretty sure they're doing all the majors this season so bryce might be doing some other stuff as he says right here like maybe i'll just steal the other color casters or just anyone or um or he does something on the desk i don't really know like bryce says he's not sure if he's going to be casting if someone else is going to step in with bryce so i guess we'll have to you know work out kind of what happens on that front but hopefully everything works out for these guys tons able to attend the next one because unfortunate scenes that like um you He's had so many months of being completely free, and then the event comes around and, and he, well, tests positive and can't unfortunately go. Now, um, even players or even people that could attend had a bit of a difficult time. As Hex says right here, landed 45 minutes ago, still haven't even D planes. Can't say I've really ever heard that term. Maybe it's an American thing, but you guys can let me know in the comments. But, um, you know, due to long lines at customs, no info, none, apparently. And even as JP Chris says, New York Subliners opt against Seattle waiting to deboard our plane and wait three hours in Toronto customs. It's so, like, um, I mean, yeah, this I thought was great. The kind of the Escobar meme here, really, I suppose, with Chris sitting on the bench. So this is certainly one that's been added to the to the draft or saved because there's potentially going to be many opportunities for use a meme like this this upcoming weekend when, for example, game one begins or day one begins and there's like a massive hour-long technical delay before the Subliner series. There could be a perfect opportunity for this one to come to fruition. But um, yeah, hopefully everyone got landed safely and everything after all those delays. And I wanted to give the CDL some credit here, actually, because this might be the best CDL-related skin that I've seen in the game so far. This is um, effectively the viewership rewards for this weekend. You can link the YouTube account or however exactly it works to your kind of um, in-game account and you can earn rewards by watching the weekend which is pretty cool like um, of course it's unfortunate it's Vanguard's but like, I just wanted to bring this up on the big screen because this might be like the, the best thing I've seen I mean look at this what I really like about this is that the fact that I'm not sure if they did this for Major 2 but um, but everything here is kind of related to the actual Major itself like this camo is I mean look at it we've got the maple blossom it's related to Canada the skin is actually really cool in itself so like look I don't think this is really cool to be honest like, based on the skins that we actually have in the game the CDL skins themselves that really are aren't up to much to have all this type of stuff which is um, very much related to the well the event in question and to have a really cool skin to earn while watching that's really cool a great step in the right direction here I thought based on what we've seen previously and hopefully they can take these ideas and kind of up them and ramp them up going forward as well and in a game that um, people actually want to get the skins for that might not be Call of Duty Vanguards I'm sure this stuff will actually do rather well so hopefully this um, hopefully this does well hopefully people like the skin and hopefully they continue down this path because this camo alone is just way better than whatever the CDL has produced on the you know CDL's generic skins front like, this is a better Toronto camo than the actual official Toronto camo, at least from my perspective. But yeah, let's dive into this Paris Legion stuff, right? Because this is kind of funny. And um, I don't know what happens here going forward. I kind of, well, look, I hope the Paris Legion goes. Obviously, I've roasted them a fair bit, but I kind of, you know, I'll kind of miss not being able to roast them if I can't roast them anymore. But um, yeah, maybe they're still going to stay in some form or another. So anyway, breaking news from, of course, the flag Paris Legion's ownership group appears to have filed trademark rights to Vegas Legion back in March, a little bit ago now. A similar change was made for their Overwatch franchise, relocation soon. So, of course, this season, they're still going to be Paris, but next year, it might be a different story. So, you can see on this website right here, we'll look at it here in a second, that, um, well, the Vegas Eternal, which I believe is their kind of, well, it's the Overwatch League's franchise type thing, and then the Vegas Legion has also been effectively trademarked earlier this year. Now, this might mean that Paris want to effectively get out of Paris, because one of the things that gets them roasted an awful lot is that they're theoretically a French franchise, despite the fact that they've never even really attempted to field any French players, and when they had the opportunity back in Modern Warfare to pick up Hydra, they passed up the opportunity as, of course, 
course, I'm sure a couple of you guys know. But you can see on the website right here, Vegas Legion, Vegas Eternal. Pretty sure this is the logo of the Paris Eternal as I think they are at the moment, but I guess they're trying to become the Vegas Eternal or something. Now, um, the big question here really has been, like, um, you know, ignore what Kronos kind of said right here, but this AFOC guy who is followed on Twitter by a few, let's just say, influential people in the cult scene seems to believe that um, it's possible, you know, LV Las Vegas would be related to Cloud9. We actually saw this in the off season that um, I think it was this past season, actually, that there was rumors that Cloud9 wanted the Vegas franchise spot. And like, um, I think there was even some talk from like Hex kind of wanted it or was talking about potentially getting it for the Huntsman brand or whatever. And then the CDL said no, or like someone was asking for it and they said no, because I think maybe it was getting reserved or something. And they said that could be Cloud9 kind of reserving the Vegas spot. It might be that, the, you know, Legion have kind of reserved the Vegas spot. They want to move out there and kind of change from Paris to Vegas. Now, um, I mean, look, the ownership group in general of the Paris Legion is the main issue here. Like, regardless of where they are as, um, as an organization, like, it's not really going to make too much difference if they still run their franchise the same way. So, um, there's kind of a, a hope maybe that they'll go to Vegas and then, like, some other ownership group will actually take over the, the ownership of the franchise and kind of the relocation will act as kind of like a, the next step, I suppose. Like, a, well, at least the franchise can kind of get rid of the old stereotypes about Paris if they move to Vegas. Like, let's say a new ownership group comes through. That might be an idea there. That's, of course, rather hopeful. But, um, yeah, we can see how it goes. The thing is, from my perspective, right, is that do the CDL, maybe they don't care, but do they really want to lose, like, um, you know, one of their European franchises, right? Because you've got London, you've got Paris. Like, if it's me and you're getting rid of Paris and you're taking it to Vegas, you definitely want to have, like, a Madrid team, right? You should at least try and have, like, at least try and pretend you've got a global league going on here, right? And, like, you know, have a Madrid team or keep something in Europe. So I'm not really sure they want to get rid of Paris unless they have something else to replace it with, which might indicate that expansion might be coming. There's, of course, no guarantees. But yeah, definitely intrigued to your perspective on this, right? Are Paris just going to move to Vegas or try and move to Vegas and just stay as Paris as they are with the current ownership group doing the same thing? they've always done, like, um, it seems not really going to make too much difference, or is it possible that, like, another ownership group comes through and takes over Vegas Legion, and then, um, you know, refranchises them or whatever, right, Cloud9 could come through, and then the organization behind Paris gets out of here. As I say, I'll miss being able to roast them, but it certainly would be a better thing for the Call of Duty League in general. Let's dive into the optic stuff then. So, actually, there's an episode of The Process coming out, Peaks and Valleys, they say, so kind of looking at the last few weeks, obviously, through Major 2, when they had a pretty difficult time, and then since then, the Illy stuff, the Pro Loot stuff that, of course, has happened over these last few days. Prelude, of course, is flying out there to Toronto. Illy's already there. Not, of course, going to compete, unfortunately, this weekend, as we looked at yesterday. The thumb injury really hasn't healed up to the degree they would like it to yet. Still kind of waiting for confirmation on exactly what is going on, what the issue is. Like, um, I mean, look, after this event, we've got another couple of weeks off, right? A couple of weeks break. Classic stuff from the CDL. That, uh, well, hopefully that's going to be good for Illy, right? Because he had a little bit more time to heal up and get back into practice. But for now, of course, Prelude is doing a phenomenal job in the roster. And I mean, Shotzi actually has some ideas on exactly why this might be the case. You guys might remember last year sometime, there was this talk on the Optic Chicago team about uh, kind of Scump and his um, what is it, the Yeezy foam runners or whatever, that they then gave out to the rest of the team and apparently it helped them fry. Now, um, I mean, Shotzi believes a similar thing might be going on here with Prolute in the roster, that uh, these yellow slides he's got apparently are the factor and when he didn't wear them for a series up against New York, they lost the series and then he put them back on and they won 3-0. It's so, like, um, you know, obviously it's a bit of a superstitious thing, but like, I don't know, some teams seem to benefit off stuff like this and maybe Shotzi's got a point. Yard control. And if they go Every beat, time you join like, the flank, you lose the next series. Can you not join the flank shot? Kind of like no, honestly, I have a theory, bro. I just don't understand. Like, Another theory, just like a uh, superstition. I, I think we talked about it um, yesterday. Byron, whenever he, flag, he wore like, his. Pushing through this, like, A side. He's like, like yellow side, slides. Like, uh, I mean, I just, we were 3 0. Like as Afro soon as he went back to the already, others, he other well slides, he just held it and just tried to get a kill. He has somebody looking over him. But not honestly, like, obviously. And then number six and number five will kind of rotate over. Number four can pinch. Number five can roll so I thought it was kind of funny to be honest. I do like how, you know, superstitions at times some of these pros get. Of course, Shotzi's kind of joking anyway. But in fairness, it was actually a thing last year. We'll look at it in a second here. But as Dashi says, actually, these, I believe, are the yellow slides in question. The Pro Leaks wearing when he was getting a trim just the other day. So maybe these are the slides that are the crucial factor of a Pro Leaks to absolutely take over series. Because, of course, like, they lost to New York fair and square. New York were pretty dominant in the half point those series. And I'm really looking forward to the Subliners versus Surge series this weekend. Because, wow, that is um, honestly a cracker to start the weekend. I'm pretty sure it's the first series that Today, actually on Thursday. We'll look at the schedule here in a second because for the, the words I had about the schedule the other day, the fact that they were starting late, they've actually definitely done a great thing throughout the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll see that here in a second. Just wanted to mention this because I found this up from last season, right? Like as it says, game day. This is when Scump has the kind of foam runners on. You guys might remember this period last year, I guess July. So it's probably what, stage four, stage, stage five, I guess, last season when Scump and Co. I think that was maybe when they beat FaZe or something at the start of stage five and Scump was wearing the foam runners and therefore everyone thought, okay, this is the absolute factor to be 
winning right so you can see him with the mirror and i'm pretty sure like hex or whatever bought them for envoy as well and the rest of the team because they thought it was the fact uh of course in theory it shouldn't make any difference at all but who knows right in the players heads they've got you know the lucky sliders on they just know they're going to absolutely fry in the series and maybe it puts them in the right mental state who knows but you know shotzi believes it's potentially going to be a factor also thought this is kind of interesting from optic right here welcome to optic oakley right so of course they've been working with scump for a little bit and they officially partner up with oakley right here and um, i mean yeah Illy's kind of a big part of this video but i'm pretty sure they don't mention him necessarily specifically because they talk about dashi and they talk about other players but um, and of course they talk about their major one run but they didn't necessarily mention Illy specifically in this video right and some people were saying well that means like, he's going to get dropped right which obviously isn't the case he's definitely coming back into the team when he's ready to go but um, there's no guarantee that's going to be anytime soon unfortunately for optic in general right now this also just wanted to mention real quick because i thought it was really cool this is from hex's vlog that he came out with yesterday and karma is signing these kind of um i don't know what the cards are on the left hand side or who made these but i'm pretty sure i mean these ones on the right are definitely line man cards from back in the day and he was signing them for kind of hex's collection which i thought was really cool it's like i wonder if any more of these will come out or get produced at some point or another this just real quick before we talk about the matches here for well from the subliners big changes are coming apparently if you haven't gotten into the action with the run it back series yet now is the time so not exactly sure what this is i guess we'll stay tuned and see but this is the schedule for the weekends i mentioned yesterday or the day before or whatever i think it was last night that um the thursday games are an hour and a half later than they usually start i think this might be some sort of clash in the venue there's something else going on or they're thinking that like i'm um, in toronto on a thursday not a weekend like they want to start it kind of as late as possible so that um, they don't have too many issues with people still at school or work or stuff and stuff like this that you know fair enough it kind of makes sense but uh, yeah thursday is rough for us over in europe right it starts an hour and a half later than usual so the final game is going to finish about 3 30 my time and it's going to finish about 4 30 in mainland europe that's pretty tough however friday saturday sunday this is honestly really good and i'm happy that toronto and the cdl are doing this because i'm sure toronto realized that like um you know for example clean his parents who are going to stay up to watch the games they don't want to be up too late and they've got a lot of european fans of course putting this a bit earlier makes it maybe more difficult for people in australia and new zealand like there's always going to be some losers at the end of the day but like um it is definitely a lot better for mainland europe right because i mean the first series on friday saturday sunday starts at 1 30 eastern at half six bst which um, i think is honestly a much more sensible time for the weekend in general and it means that the final series of the day actually instead of finishing at four finishes at like two and of course there's usually delays and stuff anyway which pushes that a little bit back further but for the five game days this is much more sensible and I think the Sunday as well it's much more sensible because on Sunday you've got four games to play starting the grand finals at 6 p.m. Eastern is much better like there's a much better time to start the finals like before midnight in the UK as opposed to you know well well after midnight as it usually is for then a best of nine to follow so I think Friday Saturday Sunday they a great job here it makes a lot more sense to do it an hour and a half early hopefully they continue that trend into the rest of the season and next season as well very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comment section below I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it hit on the like button tell us the YouTube gods this is a good video I'd also like you to see it as well and upgrade the competitive quality community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.